Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of The Canary Room. If memory serves me right, it's uh, episode 9 of season 3 of the show, but uh, I, to be honest, I can't quite remember. Uh, I hope everyone's keeping well. Uh, a couple of thank yous to start the show with. Uh, thanks to all of you, um, because we have hit... Uh, over 6,000 subscribers to the channel now um, I have to say I'm absolutely thrilled about that so everyone who's subscribed to the channel thank you very much indeed it is really really appreciated um, it can be quite a lonely job uh, making the show and, and the feedback that you give to um, to to me on, on Facebook uh, and on YouTube is, is very much appreciated. I must say, this episode I have had some help uh, in the filming, so I managed to prize my 14-year-old son Will off his Xbox and, uh, and Will helped me film the top tips section of the show today uh, so I'm very grateful to you for that son thank you um, I've uh, I've tried to film close ringing birds on three separate occasions for you and uh, and every time I just couldn't quite get the uh, the angle right so Will's help with that that's coming up in our top tips today as is moving birds and as is the use of a light bulb in nests uh, more of that later on um, we've got all of your favourites of course today we've got the red pole diet some uh, exciting news there um, top tips I've mentioned we've got the garden birds beautiful garden birds today um, we have uh, no on the road again this week but next time out uh, we'll be taking a special special visit to um, to well to a very successful Norwich breeder uh, I'll just leave it there for now uh, it's a virtual visit though because um, obviously we are still in lockdown I must just say a huge, huge thank you to everybody oh, who has taken the time to um, be very, very generous with their donations. So thank you, Stephen Thomas, Graham Parker, DJ Ashton, I think that's Darren, um, Martin Gentles, and, and it's that man again. It's it's Michael Burling. Michael, thanks very much indeed. Um, Michael, if you've... Uh, you're on Facebook. You can check out his um, his channel. It's the Dog Father, um, and it's dog training. Fascinating, fascinating work that he does. So, cheers, Michael, for that. Um, as always, everyone, it could be another epic today, uh, but hey, we've all got time on our hands. Grab yourself a cuppa and enjoy the show. Last time out in our top tips, we um, we showed a, a trick of hanging a, a, a cockbird on the front of a cage. Um, and we have the blue cock in the cage to uh, to mate with um, a clear yellow hen. Now, um, I checked the eggs after a week uh, and they were full. Um, they were due to hatch this morning. Um, as you can see behind me now, just have a quick look at this shot. Um, one has hatched and the hen is feeding that already. And uh, now there's another two eggs in there that are both full. Um, so fingers crossed for those. Um, what I will do is I'll keep an eye um, to see whether those are the uh, chicks hatch or not yet. What has been happening in the canary room um, of late is that the majority of nests are having hatched on day 13 rather than day 14. So essentially they've hatched a day early. Now, not all the chicks have come out a day early, I hasten to add, but in this cage behind me, there's just one out at the moment. Now, I like to time things in the canary room. So there's a couple of nests hatching at any one time. Um, I've also got a nest of agate mosaics, red agate mosaics, uh, or agate mosaics. They are, um, they've hatched as well. Now I checked them this morning. Uh, they've just hatched one so far and um, it was quite cold overnight and um, so it may be that you know it's later on in the day that the rest of the chick hatch sorry so what I will do though um, is I'll keep an eye on them and tomorrow if they uh, if there's only still one in the blue nest and um, maybe the day after I will move the chick under the uh, agat mosaics and I will run that hen again um, what I've also done for you is we just see how uh, some of the lines are developing in the shed and, and that will be one of the real features of the show today. So we're going to have a look at, uh, at the blues. Um, 
we uh, we popped the blue eggs that were full um, underneath the uh, variegated buff hen in cage B. Um, and you remember she was due to go with the cinnamon yellow cock and her eggs were empty. Um, she hatched and has hatched four, all four eggs. They were all full, they were all four have hatched. Um, and she is feeding them beautifully. Now, as I, as I sort of put the show together, I, I, I try and think um, what might be interesting uh, for people to watch. Um, uh, you know, sort of chronicling the, what happens in, in the Canary Room, but also sort of, you know, what might make it a, a, a viewable show. Um, and one of the things I've decided to do was film the development of the nest over a, um, a daily basis. So we'll start with this nest of blues. Um, so we can see sort of day minus one or, or day zero really and, and two of the birds at that stage is hatched and then as we move through into day one you can see that there's four little chicks in there now um, and then through to day two and day three and day four and they're starting to to sort of really grow in size And they grow exponentially around the six, seven, and eight day mark. Now, at nine days, um, I rang them, uh, clothes rang them, um, and uh, and that's in our top tip. So we'll we'll see that uh, full, uninterrupted coverage of clothes ringing birds. Um, and they were, they really, really developed, um, and, and they were probably, as you'll see a little bit later on, um, they were a bit difficult to ring, to be honest. I probably should have done them at day seven. Conversely, I've got another nest of, uh, of just two chicks in it. Um, I didn't ring those until day 11 uh, because they were smaller, a lot smaller. So um, I will uh, I will sort of chronicle the uh, the days to 21 days with the, this nest. So I think in this episode, we'll probably get up to about day 12. And next time out, we'll look at days, nine, uh, days 12, 13 onwards um, to day 21. The one thing that you will notice as they start to feather up is there's no blues um, so there's a nest of a nest of four very nice chicks uh, but there isn't an allied to white amongst them um, which is um, bittersweet really uh, you know I'd, I'd like to get some allied birds um, what I have done is I have uh, checked the nest of the other hen the variegated whose chicks they are um, and she's laid five eggs and they are all full as well so they're due in a week or two's time a week or so's time rather um, and they're full so fingers crossed they will hatch as well uh, and there'll be a blue amongst them um, so of course we've got the clear behind us We've got the um, variegated still here. Um, what I've also done is I've put the uh, blue cock over um, a clear buff hen um, that was one of our cock birds that turned into a hen. Um, she only laid twice and I checked the eggs and they're clear. So she's currently incubating another bird's eggs. Um, and I've ran the blue cock now in with a green, a self green buff hen. So we'll see how we get on with the blue line. Chicks aren't big enough to tell the quality of them yet, but it's a very different story with our clears. When I first started keeping fights uh, way back at, at the turn of this century, so 2001, I think it was, I got, I got my first fights. Um, like many who come into the hobby, uh, I, I made the mistake of being fixated on colour um, rather than type. Uh, and so um, after my first year, uh, I'd, I'd acquired some birds from uh, a gentleman by the name of Pat Fenlon. Um, and I bred, uh, I think, 40, 45 birds in my first year off six pairs. Um, you know, which, which I'd, I'd kill to have that kind of yield now. Um, but what I did after my first year was I got rid of the vast majority of birds that weren't um, clear. 
so I kept maybe the odd variegated, the odd white, uh, but everything else I got rid of. Uh, and that was um, a mistake. You know, it, it really was a mistake. Um, the variegated birds had type, but I, I, I just wanted clears. And and, uh, and I had some success as a novice with my clears. Um, I won clear at best novice clear at North of England. Uh, I won it at North Wales, which were two big shows at the time, uh, as they are today. Um, so it, it was some part vindicated. Um, my clears in the, the champions have um, have ebbed and flowed, it's fair to say. Um, I concentrate on keeping quality birds rather than colour of birds. But over the last couple of years, the birds have um, have lightened up. Uh, we saw the, the old hen um, and the variegated yellow cock, her son. Last year, they produced uh, a number of birds for me the vast majority of which I've retained. Now, a couple of them have gone to good friends of mine, uh, but the vast majority of those birds I've retained. So there is a couple of dark birds that they bred, but the majority of them, including six or oh, five, sorry, uh, clear or ticked buff hens remain in the shed. And that's, you know, really building around that family of fifes. Um, made a couple of acquisitions of clear yellow cocks as we saw in episode one of season three certainly we saw the new one coming in this year um, and i have to say the the quality of what i've seen so far from those birds is looking good now a little bit later on in the show we're going to do a, a sort of bird of the week it's going to be three birds so i'll introduce you to one of the young borders one of the young fifes and one of the young red agat mosaics as well um, the quality i'm really happy with now you know birds will change young fifes will change and they go through um, a variety of different stages so when they when they come out the nest what you're looking for is and we can see a you know, really good example of it in this cutaway now is a really good cut in the neck and um, so you've got that real clean neck on it and you hope over time that that, that cleanness stays there and um, and so that's one of the first things you're looking for and um, you know as, as well as sort of good position Difficult to tell on size, although there is a marked difference in some of the bird sizes. But at this time of, you know, this time of, of hatching, I think that's more to do with how they've been reared and fed rather than what the overall size of the birds is going to be like. Um, the clears do change, and they will go through a stage where they look awful. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm often sort of sat there with my head in my hands going, you know, where have all these really good clears gone? Um, so we have bred a, a significant number of clear and light birds this year. Um, I've got four nests behind me here um, with chicks that we're going to take some of them away today and we're going to wean them a little bit later on. Um, there's three clears uh, in in cage eight, three clears in cage nine, three clears in cage 10, or one's a 10%. Uh, and in cage 11, there's a clear and two variegated. Um, we've already got one clear away, uh, and we've got um, uh, another two 10% away. So the, uh, the, the volume of, of birds is there. Of course, what we're interested in is the quality. The quality seems to be there as well. So I've got um, a number of, of young off the two clear yellow cocks that we've got in the shed now. Um, and the quality in both of those birds seems to be there, which is, you know, which is great. Um, anything can happen. Anything does happen. Everything probably will happen and, and they will change. But so far on the clear line, I'm very, very pleased with what I've seen. Similarly, the green line, whilst the volume of birds isn't there, as we can see here in this shot, I've got five dark birds away with a cinnamon. And um, the quality of these birds looks really good. Um, certainly there's a couple, there's a heavily variegated that looks like it's going to be a yellow. Um, that's out of the best, uh, best dark hen, uh, back to a father. Um, and that is starting to shape up really well uh, and really nicely. A long, 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 long way to go. Um, I'm pleased because if I look at what's in the nest, 
uh, the old hen um, with her second round. She's got two dark young in the nest. Um, I've got a nest of three dark, which is um, out of her daughter. Uh, and the good buff cock, his son. Uh, so there's three darks in that nest. There's also a clear in that nest. Um, now the clear from that nest is out of uh, cage five. Um, and that is, um, you know, she hatched a single nest there and uh, she had three eggs, they were all full, but only one hatched. Um, I didn't want to to let her rear just a single chick um, there can be uh, there can be some real challenges with single chicks um, the bird that we'll see in bird of the week is a single chick uh, but unfortunately you may remember from the last episode um, the old orange ring hen and the young buff cock bird clear buff cock they had a single chick under a, a dark a green dark bird um, and although it got to a stage where I rang it and um, it didn't make it um, and if we have a little look at it now bless it it's um, it's clear that across its stomach is um, you know is is, a, is the bacterial infection it looks like um, it looks like black spots so we need to be careful of that I am treating the birds as we saw in the egg food make last week with grog um, but it won't cure everything and unfortunately this little fella didn't make it um, that hen is back on four full eggs so we'll uh, we'll keep an eye on that but moving birds around into nests is something that as we're in the the, the depth of the season now i'll do with uh, with increasing frequency so i'll make up nests of birds so we've got three darks in there and a clear uh, that's obviously very easy to tell the difference it's more difficult when you've got clears and clears in there um to tell where the uh, the birds have come from so um clear line some really nice young birds top tips later on we're going to take some of them away from their parents now uh, they have been mated up in the second round one of them's on four eggs one's laid a second egg today the other two are yet to lay um, but that that's that's looking good and as we go around the room um, there's a number of birds um, on eggs and all of those eggs now are full uh, which is which is really really encouraging particularly in the canaries so um, I'm really I'm really happy about that it looks like it's going to be a, a good season a good season both in terms of quality and in terms of numbers which of course makes it um, good because it means that later on in the year I'll have a number of birds to select from uh, it's going to be challenging because I'll you know have to decide which birds I'm going to keep and which birds I'm going to let go more of that as we go on later in the show the weather has been uh, incredible you can see I'm, I'm sporting a something of a tan uh, and a new haircut which I, I did myself with some clippers I acquired from uh, from Amazon um, uh, as we go uh, in the garden today we start off with a with a shot one of my favorite shots actually is a, one of my French lavenders with them um, the little bumblebee uh, whizzing around it On the feeders, uh, they'd gone for a, for a couple of weeks, the goldfinches, but they were back here. Um, and you can see it was a particularly windy day when I uh, when I shot this, and uh, and they are sort of clinging on um, and still eating for dear life. So there's some you know admirable qualities amongst these goldfinches.
what I did do is right at the end, I slowed it down. Um, I slowed the footage right down, uh, just so you could see them in flight. Um, so hopefully you, you'll enjoy that. Um, there are different feeding stations in the garden. Um, I, I sat out there for what felt like hours um, to see a, a robin uh, basically take the mickey out of me. But before that, there was a um, captured this on film. And again, so you can see it, I've slowed it down 50%. But in the bushes was a great tit with a... Um, with what looks like a caterpillar uh, so it's obviously got young feeding somewhere which would um you know which would tail because i uh, i also discovered this in the garden which is uh, a, a, an opened eggshell a, a hatched eggshell and um and so it would look like there it looks like I've, I've, I've had a look online and it looks like it's from the tip family this eggshell so um it looks like we've got blue tits nesting somewhere in the garden, which is great. And then the elusive Robin, who basically took the mickey out of me when I was filming him. Uh, but there's some beautiful shots of the Robin. Um, I've had quite a bit of feedback about the in the garden section. It seems to be enjoyed by everyone. Uh, I'm lucky enough to, to have a garden. I know some people aren't. Um, and I have really, really enjoyed it over these last few weeks. From the birds in the garden to the British birds in the shed, it's time for the Red Pole Diaries. It has, um, it's been an eventful couple of weeks. Um, you'll recall uh, we saw some of the birds feeding each other uh, in the last episode. Um, I'm pleased to say uh, that we have our first Red Pole eggs. Um, so the uh, the silver hen that we saw being fed um, last time out uh, started to pick up in earnest um, and very quickly uh, built a lovely little nest. Um, now that nest was um, very, uh, very quick in construction um, and very quickly followed by eggs. Now you can see here the difference in size between a fife egg and a red pole egg. Um, not as big as you'd think uh, the difference in size. Uh, probably if I'd had a border egg at the time that would have made a real difference. Um, the um, So first egg, uh, she laid five uh, in total. I did take them out every day. Um, I've set them now. Um, unfortunately, uh, as I was setting them on day five, I smashed one. Now, I was absolutely devastated. I haven't broken an egg um, in the room for many, many a year, uh, despite the fact that, as Claire would say, I've got hands like shovels. Um, I've managed to, uh, to have quite a gentle touch when it comes to eggs. But I have, um, I smashed one and I have to say I was absolutely devastated. Um, so she's set on four eggs. She's incubating them now. Incubation period for the red poles uh, is 11 days. Um, we've got live food in. Uh, I don't know whether they'll be full or not. Um, I haven't seen the birds tread or mate. Um, so, you know, no idea whether they're going to be full. Um, Checked all the other nests. There's no signs yet. There's a little bit of, uh, you know, there's there's more um, advanced sort of breeding signs. I popped bats in again um, for them to have a little bathe in, and they've enjoyed that. And you know, they are feeding each other. I've seen that. So hopefully, uh, it won't be long until the rest of the red pole pairs go down.
Um, I'm absolutely uh, over the moon this morning because um, what I also noticed in the week was a one of the Siberian hens who's with the cockbird picking up um, and uh, I put together a little bundle of nesting material and uh, I'll show you how I did that in top tips um, and I'd also um, I'd gathered some moss from the garden uh, and what I did with the moss I raked it off the lawn I, um, I soaked it in uh, a uh, Dr. Johnson sterilizing solution just to get everything out and then I dried it naturally um, so I offered the birds that as nesting material. I put it all together in a bundle for them. Um, and uh, this Siberian hen, you know, with a big beak full of, um, of just the white sharpie, really. She's not interested in, not interested in my hard work and labor. Um, but started to build a nest up, you know, and then nothing spectacular, but, but was there. And as you can see now, when I went in earlier today, I, uh, I opened up the nest box. She flew off very quickly, uh, and in there was my first ever Siberian goldfinch egg. Um, so I've taken that away. Uh, I've put a dummy in egg, egg there for now. I will leave the cock in, um, but I'm going to have to make sure that I am in the room early because I, I understand that cock, uh, Siberian cockfinch birds, as in many goldfinch birds, you know, quite like the taste of eggs. So um, I'll be in early to, to remove the eggs each morning. What I've got, you'll remember, I've got a, a mewling pair of a um, Scotch fancy hen and a uh, red pole cock. They've been feeding each other. They did lay eggs, um, or the hen, the canary hen laid eggs, and they were clear. They have been feeding each other, and the, the, the cock has been particularly attentive of her. Um, and what I'm toying with the idea of is setting this first nest of Siberian eggs, uh, assuming she lays a full clutch under those birds um, and seeing how they get on. The uh, the red pole cock will take um, mealworms, um, obviously, and, and they'll need extra protein. So I'm just toying with it as an idea at the moment. I'm not 100% certain um, what I'm going to do. But what I will do is once she has finished laying the clutch, I'll take the Yumo cock out and I'll pop him in with the other hen. The pea throats, um, they're you know, carrying on developing, but there's nothing yet from them. Um, they've uh, messed around with material but not picked any up in earnest. I did have eggs from the, the hen last year. Um, she was with a different cock last year. Um, but uh, she only laid twice, and um, but I think this year she, you know, she's a she's a year older, so she's uh, she's a two year old bird now. She was one year last year, um, and so I'm hoping she's reached you know a greater sexual maturity this year. So fingers crossed with those, they will be uh, okay. So um, so positive news from this week's Red Pole Diaries. Fingers crossed for next time. I. Um, I will keep everything crossed for those pesky little red poles and the Siberians. I imagine that I've got far, far lot of heartache still to come there. Um, one of the birds which hasn't given me the heartache I perhaps expected it to, or certainly not yet, has been the border canaries. Um, we got uh, five eggs in the first round, four hatched. Four are now away and feeding themselves, so they're fully weaned. They're in a double breeding cage. And as you can see just over my shoulder now, the hen in there is back on the nest. And um, the cock is still with her, feeding her intently. Um, and, uh, oh, she's just come off the nest as I've spoken. That's Sod's Law. And there's the cock. <laughs> oh, you couldn't script this. Um, <laughs> So, what I was going to say was, she's very dutifully sitting on six eggs, um, but as I've started to film, she's just jumped off them. Those six eggs are all full. Um, now, I set her and the other mosaic hen, who's on four full eggs at the same time, with another fife. So, what I may do, depending on how many of those borders hatch, is I may swap and drop a couple uh, in other nests, just to see how they get on. The borders, one of them we'll see in Bird of the Week this week. Um, you know, the young that have come out look fantastic. Um, 
you know, really interesting to see the comparable size between the, the sort of borders when they first come away and the fives and the borders look positively huge. Um, so it's been a, it's been a good good solid start with the borders um, which is you know which is hugely hugely encouraging so uh, without further ado let's have a look at this week's bird of the week so first up in uh, in bird of the week this week is um, one of our young borders uh, one of two clears that we've um, that we bred this time round, or certainly from the first round, so fingers crossed for the second. Um, I do like the look of this bird. I want to see if we can try and get it up onto the perch. Um, not really been in a show cage before. Um, and we'll put a we'll put a clear fife up next, and you, you'll see see at the the sort of difference uh, in between them. But um plenty to you know plenty to like about this bird there's um you know an awful awful long way for it to go and um, not showing it so much now but it does have a it has a, a freedom in the neck which i like um it's not got a bad head on it uh you know all in all um it's it's not a bad little bird so we'll see how this develops over the um over the next few months right here in the canary room you can get an idea in the in the different size of the the two birds from the the border there to this young fife this was a single nester it is a cock bird i'm pretty certain of that i've i've heard it chirp away um i've seen it chirp away um it's a um I think it's got some potential this, it, it, certainly early on, um, I really really like the look of it uh, as a bird, it's um, it's bred out of uh, one of the, the now five light buff hens uh, that I've got, um, and the uh, the older clear yellow cock, um, so the older clear yellow cock's gone over uh, three different hens now, and, uh, and all the young um, that I've seen so far out of him, uh, I'm quite impressed with. So this is our second bird of the week. It is another clear, but this time it's a fife. We've seen the uh, the relative steadiness of the uh, the two, um, certainly the fife and the border. Uh, what we've got now is um, a red agat mosaic. Uh, this, I believe, is the hen. Um, you can see she's a, she's a little dainty thing. Very, very, very pretty. Haven't started colour feeding yet. Uh, I will do that at about 45 days, um, which is going to be in the next week or so. Um, that they'll be 45 days. Um, and what I'm going to do, I, I will look to exhibit these birds later this year. Uh, but what I will do is I'm going to mix the carafil in the egg food. Um, I don't want the the mosaics are, are housed in a cage at the very bottom, um, on the very bottom row. So the 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 risk of cross contamination is is small, although there still is a risk. And you know you can imagine getting um, you know a really really nice fife and and it getting colour feed on it and and basically that would debar it from exhibition. So um, I'm gonna gonna make their egg food in um, or put their colour food in the egg food. But a sweet little bird, one of three I've got. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the other nest is hatching out today. Uh, and the other hen, which I ran the, the cock with, is on, um, is on four full eggs. So they're due this time next week. So we'll keep everything crossed for that. So that is our third and final bird of the week. It's a, a red agat mosaic hen. It is a, a part of the show which is um, which is incredibly popular. And uh, and I'm you know I'm really grateful for that. Really grateful for all of the feedback and comments that I get. Um, I had a comment on YouTube about the the needle sexing 
uh, telling me that it, it you know it, it simply doesn't work and, and I have some sympathy for that it is by no means um, you know an exact science um, as, as nothing really is uh, in bird keeping you know we, we do things trial and error some things work some things don't work um, one of the things many of you may have noticed as we get the opportunity to spend more time in our bird room is just how often uh, hens leave the nest um, and that can be quite disconcerting um, you know the, the sort of the worry that as birds become in enhanced breeding condition the overwhelming urge to go back to nest um, knocks them out of that incubation period um, I know I'm in and out of the room now uh, three times a day um, at least uh, you know I come in and do the morning feed around about 8am um, and what I'll do there now with the egg food depending on how old chicks are in the nest is I'll mix egg, uh, the soak seed in with it um, to start with um, but one of the other things I'll do if I've seen a hen off the nest for a prolonged period of time is I will check that the eggs are still warm um, now the temperature uh, is up and down it's a colder day today and it has been very very warm now my garden I'm very fortunate is south facing um, the canary room is located at a point it's got sort of trees around it shading it it's also uh, lined and insulated uh, with um, uh, 50 mil polystyrene insulation so um, it does hold its temperature quite well but it did get quite warm um, and, uh, and so that's you know uh, one thing you've got to look out for when that happens is mite and I have seen some um, so you've got to be vigilant, vigilant and vigilant, keep up your treatments on that. But when birds walk off the nest or seem to have walked off the nest, one of the things that I like to do, just to give myself some own peace of mind, and I'm going to do this with a dummy egg, uh, just because I don't, having smashed an egg this week, I don't want to pick them up unnecessarily, is I'll take an egg and take it to my lips. And if the egg is warm, you'll be able to feel it better than you can touching it. So if you take the egg to your lips, you'll see that whether the egg is cold or not, um, or whether it's warm. If it's warm, just leave them alone. If the egg is cold, then find somewhere else to pop the egg under if you can get some other hen. I mark it with a sharpie pen and I'll put it under another nest. Uh, and that's one of the other reasons, you know, if you set a number of nests at the same time, then you have the luxury and the ability to be able to do that. So our first top tip is on ringing young canaries. And we've got some tips on nest management a little bit later on in the show. But our first top tip is in uh, ringing young canaries. Now, I'm close ringing my young canaries with Five Federation uh, close rings. I'm close it ringing my um, borders um, and my reds with um, IOA and my British with IOA close rings. Um, so I'm close ringing my birds. Now, I don't have a particularly steady hand um, and this section was filmed thankfully with Will although I still had to close ring them uh, it was done a couple of days ago so there's a different shirt uh, just for those of you watching continuity um, and what you can see is I get the 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 first sort of three toes of the birds um, so the, the sort of big toe and the two side toes and literally thread the ring through them and then these birds here were nine days old. That was probably a bit late. I probably should have done them at seven days. Um And then you can see that I'm rolling the ring over the knuckle and that leaves the back toe just in place. And so you roll the ring over the back toe and then you can see the ring is on the full leg. Um, now I repeated that four times. I've left, I, I did think when I was putting the, uh, the show together, I'd speed up the next bit, but I'm leaving it at actual pace. So ringing four canaries took me in total five minutes. There are people who can ring a canary in a matter of seconds. I am not one of those people. Um, be confident. Uh, it's very, you know, it, it, it's alien. There's a fear 
of damaging the birds. You know, there's a fear of hurting the birds. I understand all of those things. I have the same fears myself. And so the reason I've left this segment in, in its entirety, is to show you that this is how long it takes me. And you know what? That's okay. As we see the birds later on getting fed, they're fine. They aren't, you know, there's no ill effects for it. Now, with the canaries, I don't cover the rings. Um, with the British, I will cover the rings because hen British finches do not like anything in the nest. Um, and you will often see stories on Facebook of rings being jettisoned from the nest. Um, the birds with rings on being jettisoned from the nest. So I don't do it with the hen canaries, but I will do it with the, with the British finches. So that's how I close ring my canaries. You see a nest here. Um, you'll notice I call it the nest of blues. There isn't a blue in there. But hey, they're from a blue cock. So they'll be, always be blues to me. So that's the first of our, or the second of our top tips on today's show. Our next top tip is around nesting material. Now, this is an absolute bugbear of mine. Um, I've, uh, I've ordered some more nesting material and it's arrived um, uh, and came very promptly. But um, I am fed up of seeing nesting material strewn all over the cage floor. Absolutely drives me bonkers. Um, I've got the little wire um, things for hanging it on, but you'll notice certainly in the main cage block, because the cage fronts are only 10 inches high, 
I only have one bar on them, um, and I have the purchase and the drinkers on that bar, so it doesn't really work for me. Um, so I was fed up with just pushing things through. So I, um, I decided to use a cable tie just to tie nesting material together, and that holds and then is just pushed through into the cage and the hens will take material from it. Our final top tip on today's show uh, regarding the nests before we move and wean some of the young is um, making the nests up. Now I take the eggs away every day and store them in a um, an egg food drawer full of mixed canary seed as we saw on the last episode and then on the fourth day of the evening of the fourth day what I like to do is set the eggs now, it, when I look in the nest, you can often see there are random bits of material just hanging around. What that can mean is that the eggs won't move properly. The hen, if you notice the hens, they put the beaks down in the nest and they'll move eggs, they'll turn eggs over. Um, and sometimes an egg can get stuck and that can cause dead in shell. Now, um, what I do is I use a tip which was shared with me by a, a very good friend of mine, Gerald Spencer, uh, which involves a light bulb. Um, and so I get the light bulb um, and you can't press it too much because obviously the light bulb will break. So that gives you an indication. But I make the nest, force the material down just to make sure there's a sort of solid base before I set the eggs. So that's uh, our next tip on the show. And our final tip is on weaning young. Um, now, I've had a number of messages on Facebook, you know, how, what age do you wean young? You know, how do you wean young um, canaries? There is no steadfast rules. Um, I've read in books, you know, 21 days, 23 days. You, re you wean them when they are feeding themselves consistently. Now, young fifes will pick up um, from the bottom of the cages. I've got uh, a number of nests I'm gonna move today. One of the birds are 28 days old today. Uh, another are 26 days. There's another nest which are 28 days, which um, I'm not gonna move today. I'm gonna wait for another 24, 48 hours before I move them. I have seen them picking up. Um, I have seen them feeding themselves, but they, uh, I've got um, another nest that I want to wean with them. And all those, those birds have been out of the nest. Um, they haven't um, been consistently feeding themselves. So what I did earlier in the week is I prepared the cages for them. Um, you can see on the cage floor, I've got some cuttlefish, um, I've got some oyster shell grit just to give them some additional calcium. I will um, put the egg food in. There is one perch in there. Now I don't normally put a perch in. Um, I've decided this year just to give it a try, but it's very, very low down. It is only one single perch. What you don't want is birds sitting on perches chirping to be fed. And um, what I'm also doing, which is slightly different this year, is I'm weaning six young together. Now the idea behind that 
is that some of those birds will be by their very nature a little bit more advanced what i have seen is some young birds feeding or looking like they're feeding some of their nest mates but six together won't squabble um, they will work over the food together and they will um you know they will they will all be fine so i'm going to catch these birds up um, now and then later on this evening i'll do a deep clean of the cages uh, and they'll be set back up again one hen who i'm taking young off today has already laid four eggs i haven't set them yet the other hen has been mated but she hasn't built a nest yet but i'll take the old nest pan out um, and that is how we wean our young we're going to put some broccoli in the cage as well as the egg food we're going to put some um apple in there which will dip in soak seed so there's plenty of things around there to keep the young fifes occupied and interested and we're also going to put some pearl morbide in i found increasingly i'm feeding that in finger drawers i found increasingly that the young birds are going to that um, and as it's got you know uh, a good source of sort of you know a, a variety of different ingredients in it but also it adds some moisture and um, so really you don't want them to, de to dehydrate so i'll move them now and then we have a little look at them. If our blue lines and our green lines and our clear lines have um, offered us some degree of, uh, of comfort this year, it seems that our cinnamon lines are once again going to be the bane of my life. Um, we know that uh, in cage B here, you can just see in shot that this hen is on um, four chicks. Uh, we know they're chicks from the blues, although there isn't a blue in there. Um, cage D, which is the white hen just below here, uh, her eggs were clear. Um, now, I've left the cock in with it all of the time and they've built a nest together. Um, so I'm hoping that uh, I haven't seen the mate. I have seen him feed her though, which is a good sign. Um, so I'm hoping she hasn't laid yet, but those eggs will be full. Um, in cage C, the variegated buff, she had uh, two full eggs in the end that she hatched. Um, there was a cinnamon in there, uh, so it had to be a hen, because uh, it's a visual cinnamon cock with a normal hen, so anything with pink eyes has to be a hen. Um, she also had a, another young in there that she hatched, and, um, and I lost both of them i moved the uh the cinnamon away uh and i put it in a different nest um and it got to three or four days old um but it didn't make it um which was heartbreaking really um and to sort of sort of you know compound the misery of the heartbreak the the nest you'll see behind me here you'll notice that there isn't a, a nest pan in the cage anymore uh, and that's because um, unfortunately the cinnamon yellow hen that we had uh, we've lost um, you can you can see her here uh, and uh, she she went from uh, laying three eggs um, you know feeding a young well um, you know re really good mother rearing them um, uh, and, and went downhill in the space of, of 24 hours and I just couldn't I couldn't do anything to save her, unfortunately. Um, there is a, a silver lining in that the young were old enough to feed themselves. Um, I've been giving them pearl morbide on a night as well. Um, and you can see, you know, the, the, the sort of, it's not a self, it's, uh, it's a heavily variegated cinnamon. It's got a little yellow band across its neck, but, but that absolutely gorged itself on, on pearl morbide. You can see it, it, it some of its nestmates have picked at its, uh, at its feathers round its, um, round its crop and you can see it's bulging. Um, so there's, um, there's three young cinnamons in there. Um, which is um, 
you know, some some consolation. Uh, and I've also set her three eggs, um, and I checked them uh, the other day, and they're all full. Um, so there's only three eggs that she'd laid, um, but they are all full. Uh, so hopefully we will get more cinnamon chicks off her. Um, you know, one of one of the things with bird keeping is it's it's about perseverance. Um, I think, you know, it'd be very easy to give up on things um, and, and you don't achieve anything by giving up. Um, if I look at the uh, one of the hens I've got in the, the clear line in cage two, um, that, that bird is, uh, it must be four seasons old now. Now, I got it um, for last year. Um, it, it came from Gerald. It was the mother of his best in show at North Wales. Um, so very lucky to have it. Beautiful bird. Um, last year I got um, a young couple of young out of it that uh, that unfortunately just didn't make it. Um, this year round I'm, I'm running it with the with the uh, clear buff cock. Um, and this time round, uh, first time uh, empty eggs. Second time I didn't see him tread at all, but um, but I'd left him in there, and there was. Um, Four eggs, three full, three hatched. Um, they're about seven days just out of camera now. She's feeding them, so I'm, I'm going to disturb her as, as limited time as possible. Uh, so I really look forward to see what they what they look like um, as we come through. Um, one of the things that I will do, um, you know, just seeing taking some birds away and in top tips one of the things that that i will do is i'll um i wean the birds this side of the shed um this side's got some some trays in the cages so it, it makes it easier to clean them out and then once they're weaned um, i move them over to that side of the shed the shed when i've got some room um over the the next few weeks uh it's really going to be a, you know kind of a plan to wind the season down so um, I've got uh, half a dozen hens um, on eggs now um, and you know another dozen hens or so who are um, who've got chicks who I'll take a second round from um, so we'll be we, you know mid-May uh, when this episode comes out um, what I'd I'd look to do really is um, look and review the quality of all of the young that have come out. Uh, I like what I see so far, um, with one exception, which is the uh, the green buff hen, which I put the blue cock with this time round. Um, and the reason I've done that is, um, uh, you'll remember first time round we had dead in shell, well second time round we've had dead in shell as well. And as you can see here, it's a fully formed chick again, um, that's just not, not made it through. So. There's either something wrong with the hen um, or there's something wrong with the cock and the hen together. Um, so I've done it twice now. I'm not gonna make the, the, the same mistake a third time. So I've put the blue cock with it. I've put a nest pan in. Um, I put some nesting material in for them as well. Um, but everything else, I, 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 you know, I like, the, I like the look of, but I am now planning to sort of wind the season down. I don't have an infinite amount of space regrettably um in the canary room you know i've got um the cages on this side now are all set up uh, i've still got the flights at the bottom i've got another four cages on that side of the shed that i can utilize and then what i'm going to have to do um is look at the individual hens and work out which ones i'm going to retire after the round that they've currently got so you know, the old hen, the uh, orange ring hen, she's got three chicks second round. Um, and I will, uh, I might take a third round of eggs off her, but I won't let her rear them. Um, so I'll retire her into the flights. The hen uh, that I provided two nest pans with, um, you'll be delighted to know she's laid. She's laid. In fact, she's laid twice, uh, both times off the perch. So a hen has two nest pans, she's laid two eggs, both off the perch, both smashed on the floor. It's a real shame because she's a fantastic hen, uh, and the, the sort of the, the 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 devil in me wants to just persevere with her, uh, and I may well do that. I may well do that. So um, 
still got you know still got rounds to take and um, still got more young hopefully to come through um, but it is now about sort of saying okay well, well where does the season go from here and for me you know the cinnamon line I've got four visual cinnamons at the moment and um, I want that visual cock over the white hen hopefully she'll lay the the um, nest here behind me and nest C she has laid um, again Nest B, well she's rearing the blues for us at the moment, but I will run the cinnamon cock over her again. Um, and let's just see if we can't get a little flourish. If I can get 10 visual cinnamons out of this, um, then then I'll be I'll be broadly comfortable with that. Um, and that'll give me something to pick from for for next year. So as with all breeding, you know, that that's what you're thinking about. You're thinking about what do I need for next year? I've got a flush of clear birds. Um, you know, I've got some strong dark birds coming through. Hopefully the white will throw me a couple of whites. Um, I'd like to keep sort of two or three whites, certainly for next year as well. Um, and that's what I'm thinking now is sort of, you know, what do I need to pair up? What birds will I take uh, a second round from? Well, that's pretty much every bird in the shed. What birds will I take a third round from? That will be selective. Um, what I don't want to do, uh, and it's one of our questions in question time, is I don't want the season to go on indefinitely. Um, ideally, uh, we've had a good strong start to it. Ideally, last and sort of nest hatching in June. Um, you know, the British will still hatch young in July, more than likely, uh, depending on the weather. Um, and then sort of wrap everything up. So 1st of August, the lights, which are on 15 hours at the moment, will drop back down to, um, you know, I'll take, I'll take sort of six hours out of them and that'll be the winter timing and I'll do that straight drop. Um, so that's that's sort of it really that's where we are with the with the cinnamons we've looked at the darks we've looked at the clears um, we've looked at the allies we'll carry on doing that over the shows over over the next few weeks uh, I'm sure there'll be some highs and lows but what I really find interesting now is the young as they come out of the nest and just looking at their development over the sort of the weeks ahead you know once I've got them in single cages as I have um, with three of the young already you start to get a real good appreciation appreciation for them they change on a weekly basis so no judgments will be made just yet um, but a start to get an idea um, start to look for the telltale signs when they come out of the nest you know you can see birds that look like they're going to be cocks they've got a deeper depth of color uh, but as we know with our Norwich that's not a guarantee so we have an epic question time today put a, a, an announcement out up on our Facebook page um, and uh, and was inundated with questions straight away and I can't tell you how much I really appreciate it um, you know for people to engage with the show is is brilliant because uh, that's the whole reason that that I do this um, you know to try and boost the hobby and, and to, to to capture advice that I've been given uh, and to share it as much as possible um, and encourage more and more people to, to take up this fantastic hobby so our first question comes in from uh, Tobias Walters uh, I love your videos and I have a question that's very kind of you um, how many cages would you recommend to build up a good line of fife wow um, the important thing Tobias is um, there's no right or wrong answer with this but what I would say is um, for every cage that you fill have a cage empty um, and so for uh, every cage that you that you have so if you have eight cages that you plan to breed with then you're going to need 16 cages because you're going to need somewhere all being well to put the young so one of the great challenges and it's a trap i fall into myself all too often and um, you know when you look at the cages uh, certainly in the canary room and um, there's there's 36 on that wall there's 30 on that wall there's probably 15 20 behind me and um, you know the temptation is always to fill them oh i just done that oh i'll just find a space for that and um, what you need is plenty of cage space for your young um, and and what i'd also say to bias is look at the flexibility of your cages so that you can turn them into you know bigger flight cages and um, when you're overwintering your your adult birds that you want to keep 
um, and as you've seen you know earlier on in question time when we've weaned some of the young you know we've got those in double breeding cages so just give them a little bit of room so look at a ratio of two to every bird that you want to keep and um, that would be my advice for you I hope that is helpful mate next question uh, comes in from Paul Stapley um, when would you introduce wean young birds to bathing? Um, do you know, Paul, it's, it's a really good uh, question, this. And, um, earlier, uh, earlier in the week, um, just before I was doing a, a clean out, I, I put the baths on uh, the young borders, as we can see here, um, and the, the young fifes, and they were slightly, um, slightly nervous about going in the baths to start with. Um, but they did, they did jump in eventually. The the, uh, the cinnamon fife was the most adventurous. Um, those birds are about six weeks old now, uh, so I wouldn't put baths on as soon as you put the, take the birds away, because um, you know what you don't want is for them to become overly waterlogged um, or you know or even worse risk drowning so um, I'd say about six weeks uh, don't leave the shed when you put them on um, and always put baths on first thing in the morning uh, and that gives the birds plenty of time to to dry out across the course of the day um, our um, next question is in from uh, Richard Richard Lane um, when do you put a stop to breeding or when is the latest you would set a hen on eggs for the last round of the year? Um, I touched on it a little bit in the show really, Richard. I mean, um, what I would normally do um, is get two rounds uh, off each of the birds. Now, two rounds off chicks. Um, in some instances, you know, I've got a couple of birds that have already laid two rounds of eggs, um, but I haven't had chicks from them. Um, I'll keep persevering with them. Really, sort of May as we are now, mid-May when the episode comes out, that's kind of the um, that's kind of the moment where you know you, you you're thinking about right, okay, what else am I going to take a round from? Um, I don't like to set eggs after the 30th of June. Now uh, that's with the canaries. The British are slightly different. Um, I will occasionally, but what I tend to find is the birds. You know, I think our first egg was laid um, sort of uh, late February, uh, so that's a long old time, and the birds will start to lose condition. Uh, and what you don't want is birds dropping into a molt when they've got young in the nest. Um, so we we'll want a couple of really quick rounds, you know, ideal scenario, which never happens, certainly never happens in the canary room. You'll get two good rounds out of them, lots of chicks, all be happy, tra la 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 la, and you'll be done by the end of June. Um, but as I say, I generally wouldn't set an egg after the end of June. So you've got chicks hatching in July and that's it. I do know some breeders who've still got chicks in uh, in the nest in August, but I think it just creates problems for the following year. Uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, next question is, um, what would be the best floor covering for wean chicks? Tear wallpaper, cardboard, cut lino. Um, uh, that comes in from Mark Standen. Mark, um, I used to use paper, uh, newspaper, which I change daily. Um, I, uh, I don't have a supply of newspapers anymore. Um, and so I, um, I don't use newspaper anymore. I use um, tear wall. Now, what I will do is, um, because I'm weaning youngsters in double breeding cages, I'll put the egg food on one side, uh, and generally that side is a drawer, so I can pull it out every day, every other day, and just take out any excess. What I have found is the, um, the pecking boards that I'm using this year are keeping the cages cleaner than they ever have done before. So there is still mess. There will always be mess. Food will always get moved over, but that seems to keep it um, a little bit uh, cleaner. I had a uh, another question um, that have come in. So a number of people have talked about um, the malt, uh, and and I'll cover that later on in the season when it's when it's uh, when the malt is happening. Um, I've done uh, both uh, Adam Kendall, the Kendall stud, and uh, and Debbie um, have talked about some of the ideas that they'd like to see on the show. Hopefully, guys, you've seen those on the show today. Um, so very much appreciated there. Um, the uh, a question from Marion Wood. Um, I have one male canary who is delightful and sings beautifully. Um, 
if I brought another male, but in a separate cage, would he stop singing or sing more to, um, to attract the female? Uh, very simple and maybe stupid question from a real beginner. Well, there's no such thing as stupid questions uh, in this game, Marion. So um, what I find certainly in the canary room is there is, you know, probably um, a dozen, a dozen-ish cock canaries um, and the din at times uh, as they're competing for mates can be huge so yeah absolutely what i do find is if one cock canary starts to sing another one will often follow um, and they're almost trying to out sing each other and um, if that makes sense so i wouldn't keep them in the same cage because they'll fight uh, but you've no intention of doing that so pop them in a separate cage marion and uh, and see how they get on and um, thank you to everybody who has uh, taken time to to make sure uh, comments for the show and questions for the show and um, there was a question around intensive and, and non-intensive essentially it's just different terminology that's used in the colored canaries so intensive is is what we know as yellow birds and non-intensive is what we know as as buff birds and um, so you know getting to grips with terminology of bird keeping is uh, well it can be a challenge and uh, and we'll all be in my book which i am painstakingly writing um <laughs> which should be out uh, is self published so it should be out later this year uh, thanks to everybody for your questions keep them coming in keep them coming in on facebook keep them coming in on youtube below and uh, i will do my best to answer them all thanks everyone so that's all we've got time for today um thanks very much for for watching the show thanks for all of your feedback uh i really 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 do appreciate it thank you to everybody who has subscribed to the channel um we have uh, i hit my sort of self-appointed target of uh, of 6,000 subscribers so thanks to everyone who subscribed um, I will keep the videos coming uh, as long as things are happening in the canary room and they are happening um, I will continue to keep the videos coming so what's left to say really but but thank you um, I've made some great friends through this channel uh, and I, I appreciate their friendship um, I will continue to stand behind or in front it's probably better if I stand behind a camera I will continue to stand in front of a camera in the canary room trying to do my bit hopefully um, passing on some information uh, showcasing this hobby for the you know fantastic hobby that it is um, until next time everyone take care